let's get into the Clippers here. Um, as y'all know, the Clippers just came off um, a very, very impressive win against the Dallas Mavericks uh, yesterday, a game that I watched um, in its entirety because it was a because it was an early game. But before I get into that, you know, this world is very interesting. If you're doing something long enough, you hear some pretty interesting. Um, uh, what is it? Some pretty interesting statements. For the very first time, somebody told me the other day in the comment section that I'm a low key Kawhi Leonard hater. I'm a low key Kawhi Leonard hater. Somebody that probably discovered the channel 15 minutes ago saw one or two of our videos and called me a Kawhi Leonard hater. That's that's where that's what we that's where we are right now. Because maybe there are some Kawhi Leonard fans out there. They're probably a serious twerkers that cannot deal with criticizing their favorite player. Nah, I'm not like that. I'm not like you can be like that. I'm not like that because we actually have a show that we gotta run. And you have to actually you ha- you actually have to be um fair and balanced. Otherwise people are not gonna take you seriously. I'm not gonna be one of those people up there that are like, hey, you talk bad about everybody else's favorite player, but you never talk bad about yours. I don't want to be that person. So if that makes me a Kawhi Leonard hater, I think that, that then I'm, I have no problem with it. I'm not that type of um person. I feel like the criticism I gave Kawhi Leonard and the Clippers was 100% justified. And a lot of honest Clippers fans and Kawhi Leonard fans were saying the exact same thing. It was absolutely crit- uh, uh, um, it was absolutely justified because what was happening was absolute madness. The times I was producing those shows, the Clippers were like the number eight seed in the Western Conference. I don't see how I cannot c- criticize them for that. They deserved it. But over the last two games, the Clippers have been showing me some very, very um, uh, positive, uh, positive, um, positive things. Um, obviously, they won a game against the San Antonio Spurs, which obviously they aren't, you know, the best team in the league. They're the number 14th ranked team uh, in the Western Conference, but they did beat the bif- the fifth seed. Um, what is it? Dallas Mavericks yesterday. And let me tell you guys exactly what I liked about that win. First of all, finally, they were able to hold an opponent under 100 points. Their defense was slipping. The other game, I think they beat the Spurs 120 or some some crazy number. Way too many. They gave up way too many points uh, in that game. But yesterday, I liked the fact that they're able to hold that team under 100 points, which is a very, very good offense. If I'm not mistaken, I think the Dallas Mavericks are one of the top offenses in the NBA um, in terms of uh, um, in terms of scoring. They're one of the best in the NBA at a certain point, at least early, early, uh, earlier this year. Obviously, they were playing against Luka. And Luka Doncic is just going to be Luka Doncic, right? He was hitting some shots. And, you know, what's what's interesting about Luka is this. If you look at get if you look at Luca get into his his offense and his shot, especially that step back three, his shooting motion is so slow, but nevertheless, it can't be guarded. It's something unbelievable to me. I there are few players that shoot like that. Paul Pierce, he reminds me a lot of Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce had that same kind of slow release that you really couldn't bother. It, it, I mean, it's an incredible way to watch somebody play. Luca obviously um, was Luca, but. I really want to focus in on Kawhi, right? Because Kawhi um, has been really, really stepping up. And yesterday he had another monster game. Um, He was 10 of 18 from the floor. He shot 55% from the field. He shot 75% from the three, going three or four. He shot 100% from the free throw line. He got you nine rebounds, two of them um, offensive, three assists, one block. He had zero turnovers in that game and one steal. Now, I want to delve a little deeper into Kawhi Leonard's numbers, and I want to look at it. Um, in two ways. I want to look at the splits, right? I want to look at the splits that he's been on um, this season because as, a, as we speak, Kawhi Leonard uh, this year is averaging 20.5 points per game. He's getting you what? 6.1 rebounds, 3.8 assists. But I want to look at his splits for a second just to show you why playing him more is actually helping this Clippers team win games, as obvious as it seems. In December, in October, excuse me, Kawhi Leonard played two games. In those two games, he averaged 12 points. So we're not going to really look at that. In November, he played three games. He only averaged eight points that's, uh, during that period. He shot 40%, 40% from the field. It was pretty, pretty abominable. And 11% from the three-point line. In December, his minutes went from November to December. It went from averaging 23.2 minutes per game to 31.9. Basically, 32 points per game, 32 minutes per game. His scoring went from 8.3 points to 20 points per game. Field goal shooting percentage went from 40.7 to 49. Three-point shooting percentage went from 11% to 32 
free throw shooting percentage went from 50% to 78. Rebounds went from two to seven. Assists went from four basically to four. If you look at Kawhi Leonard in the month of January, he's averaging 34.5 minutes per game. He's scoring 29 points per game. He's shooting 52.8% from the field, averaging 18 shots a game. He's shooting 50% from the three while averaging four three-point attempts a game. He's shooting 94% from the free throw line, getting you 6.3 rebounds, 3.6 assists, only 1.9 turnovers, and 1.8 steals a game. Kawhi Leonard is having a 50, 40, 90 month right now in only, um, in only eight games. What does that tell you? It tells you that the more he plays, the better he is and good things happen. Now, I also want to say during that stretch, they did lose games. I also want to say that, but they had some funky lineups out there. Why? Because uh, Paul George didn't play in one of those games. And shout out to Norman Powell. Norman Powell has been one of the most consistent players coming off the bench. He is right now the sixth man for the Clippers coming off the bench. I also want to commend Ty Lue and the coaching staff for finally starting Terrence Mann. He's getting into it. I know he missed some open shots the other day, but another night he had a career high 30 plus points in that game. I like everything he brings to the Clippers, his size, his length, his tenacity, his confidence, his motor. You know, you've seen him in the playoffs. He's had great playoff experience. I like what he gives the Clippers in that starting unit, and he gives them some good size especially on the wing. So when they switch, he can pretty much hold his own. He's not as good as a defender as Kawhi Leonard, obviously who is. Paul George is an all NBA type defensive type player, but I like the minutes that he's getting. I think he's an absolute better decision than Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson did come off the bench yesterday and had some very big, big shots, some threes, especially the one he banked, uh, I think in the third quarter or something like that was incredible. But I like Terrence Mann as the starting point guard. I think the Clippers can figure it out coming off the bench. Maybe they can make Reggie Jackson the starting point guard. Maybe keep Norman Powell to two, and they're probably going to move John Wall or something like that because I think a trade uh, is going to be made in the, in, in, um, in the trade deadline. I also know that the Clippers have one of the toughest schedules to close out the season, so they need to start gelling right now. They need to start playing games. Kawhi Leonard and these guys need to actually play. Just by winning those two games, they were able to leapfrog some teams in the Western Conference standings and go back to six. They need to get up there in that top four, right? This is this is time to really, really get into it. And I think the Clippers should be looking at going into the All-Star break playing the right way. I think it's very important to go into the All-Star break playing the right way and then just kind of coast and make sure you're operating and firing on all cylinders heading into the playoffs. So I think they need to take this road, this road trip very seriously. And if I'm them, I'm trying to win every single game. Every single game. And I like the fact that Kawhi's minutes are going up. Maybe he's becoming more vocal about it because they need it to go up, right? Because you can see it's really helping his production. So these are my thoughts and opinions on the Clippers. Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section. We catch you on the next show. Peace.